Right, oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2024, the first podcast of the year, the uh, the Dirtbags 2024. We are back, Holy baby. Holy moly, Josh, was that the intro? We're on. Yeah, yeah we, we are on. on. We're on. We're ladies ready to go. Gentlemen, exciting. This is good stuff. We have a massive show lined up today. Very excited about this. Josh, you just start bringing them in because I tell you what, oh. we are packed here. We got uh, some big names in the ARB Series Championship, not just for 2023, but some 2024 uh, uh, weapons that are coming on. Boys, it's absolutely fantastic to have you on board here tonight. We're uh, looking forward to a cracking show. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start off. We'll, we'll just go around the screen what we see. We got Bowie here now, mate, an absolute class 10 legend here like uh when it comes to a man that can put the pedal to the metal i can actually see the uh see the beast in the back corner there as well sitting in the shed she looks like she's almost ready to rock and roll for uh for 2024 mate welcome to the podcast for the first time how's your uh how's your start to 2024 being yeah no pretty good yeah thanks oh almost as good as his internet connection right there so that's cranking along <laughs> Hopefully he's, uh, yeah, we get him back pretty quick there, but let's keep moving with, uh, we've also got none other than the number one, Brent Martin, the fastest pro light in the West. Hey boys, good to, good to be on. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us and yeah, looking forward to having a bit of a chat tonight. It'll be good. Yeah, it'd be fantastic to chat about the ARB series and all the other upcoming things, you know, not only that, we've actually got, um, you know, some new car guys going on as well. Denny Brown's here as well, and we're going to have a chat to him about his new race car. Very excited to see that. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good, uh, good to get going again for another year. It's come around fast, and as the off-season does, you don't really do much, and then you rush the prep for the last last minute like we're doing right now. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Exciting, and we're looking forward to having a good chat to you, and none other than Queensland killer Clayton Chapman from the Chapman's Racing uh, Stable. He's here as well. Mate, great to have you. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, no, um, yeah, keen to get into another year of racing and um, yeah, ARB Championship. Just yeah, looking forward to it. Boys, I'm going to say it already. What a stellar lineup of buggy dogs we have here tonight. I tell you what, I am excited. The fastest of the fastest, and they're all in buggies. Billy Geddes would be so proud. Hey, so let's kick it off. We we, we want to get underway straight away. Danny, let's have a chat to you, probably because you are the uh, well, you you're Mister ARB, which is fantastic. So, Danny, talk us through some of the things this year because we really want to get underway with round one of the ARB Championship. It's very exciting that that's coming up. Man, it is shortly now. And then where we're heading for the year, some of the things that you guys are doing this year to make this championship just so exciting. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, exciting year again. Um, looking forward to, you know, keeping it rolling the way we sort of have been. It's, um, you know, it's one of the old adages, if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, um you know, we're, we're definitely trying to improve things as we go. Um, one of the main things we've been doing is the live feed and getting that out. Um, so that is happening again this year. There's, you know, we've invested um, a bit more in some cameras and some drones and um, there's a few things going on on that side of things. So um, that'll come together real quick. Um, unfortunately, um, this year, um, Murray and Julie have taken a step back, um, you know, to, mm. to do a bit of traveling by themselves and, you know, get some time back for themselves because, you know, they've been nonstop for, you know, as long as I've been doing it, coming to all the events. So um, we're going to be, the timing's going to be done through Rally Safe, um, which will be a bit different for us. Uh, but, you know, still, you know, they've, they've promised us it can all be done and handled exactly the same. So we'll uh, we'll get on to that. Um, what else is new this year? We're, yeah, kicking off at Rainbow. Um, it's a hard race, that one. Hard on, hard on cars, hard on gear. Um, it's rough. It's fast. Um, the weather's... At the moment, it's, it's quite hot down here and hasn't rained for a bit, so probably going to be dealing with a bit of dust over there as well. Um, after round one, we shoot over to Griffith, uh, Hilston. Uh, we do out on uh, the, the Mitchell's property out there, um, and that's that's a real tight, twisty, technical racetrack. Um, Brent is you know, Brent's fast everywhere, but um, you know he's 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 real fast there in the trees. So that's why we went and got ourselves an all-wheel drive so we can catch him and and give him a nudge. Um, from there, up to Gundawindi, Queensland. Um, rough, fast, um, big holes, um, and real technical driving. You don't, you know, Clayton attest to this year, you don't just go there and hold it wide open. You really got to think about where you're going and and, and be smooth. Uh, then the final back down to Pines in South Australia. Um, again, super fast race, hard on gear. 
um, hard on engines that one because it's long straights, it's sandy, um, pine forests. Um, we've had the best weather. Like in, the, I've been going that race for a long time. And the last two years have been bang on perfect. So I hope it holds out for a third year in a row because um, when when that joint's on, it's uh, there's there's no better track. I do like Windy, That being said, um, so yeah, it's an exciting year and um, looking forward to getting into it. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, so many exciting things about the championship too, uh, as Tony joins us, which is fantastic. But there's so many great things about this. You know, you you guys do the dash for cashes. You do the top 10 shootouts. I mean, Gundy, uh, Millicent, all of those events, you know, they're so good for that spectator aspect. And I know that that's something you're working on and really making sure that it's a, it's a priority. And again, you mentioned the live feed there and working with the, the team there that have, you know, they've started, I, I got to be honest, I think that they've, you know, just done such amazing things with, you know, gun to windy and bits and pieces that it just continually steps up and it's super impressive. Yeah. And look, the budgets we're working with, it's, we haven't got huge budgets, so we are doing it. Um, you know, we're being as frugal as possible and, you know, the, the clubs are putting in, a lot of the money to make this happen so you know we really got to thank them for that and in turn they're getting sponsors to to pay for this um so you know they're selling cameras um to you know for advertising so um you know if you're out there and you're, you're keen to get involved in a live stream please contact the clubs um you know the the racing we do um i'm a big advocate for trying to do as much like to get the, some racing done on the saturday so you, you do your dash for cash you prologue your dash for cash or a top 10 shootout and then one or two laps if you can um and and what that does it just allows you know you put all this work into the car and maybe you've had an oversight and you have a small little issue um, if that was sunday morning you're out for the whole day but you know if you do get that on the saturday at least you can you know fix it overnight go again on a sunday and, and get some laps in and and actually race your car instead of sitting on the sidelines yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a brilliant initiative that I'd probably never thought of, but you're absolutely right. If you just do the, you know, the single lap and then on Sunday, you've got the full four laps or however that situation works. You're right. It, you know, it really does. If you break on Sunday morning, it's a real challenge. Hey, now, uh, the other thing that we might bring up real quick is uh, we've got in the house, obviously, Brent Martin and, you know, last year's uh, Australian champion. So you're running the one on the roof this year. Mate, can you run us through some of the highs of last year and what you're expecting and looking forward to the most this year? You know, you come in with a bit of a target on your back, mate, particularly when the pro light class. I tell you what, it is fantastic to see you guys, you know, continually moving through. Uh, all the classes now are just so damn far. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool to not have to take the number one off, uh, keep it for another year, which is awesome. Um, you know, backing it up again, we'll we we'll quick again this year or last year, sorry. And um, yeah, real real happy with that year. It was like I feel like every race we're racing someone. Um, yeah, me and Danny had a good battle at Hillston, had a good battle with Dale there as well, which a few people saw, and then. Um, yeah, probably the best the best time I had was at Millicent racing uh, Andy Brown. That was just uh, one of the, like we both got off on a Saturday and come out and big smiles on our faces and and uh, so it was good 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 you know, year for us and obviously coming away with the with the win at the end was uh, you know what we what we go we don't go there for that but it was a good reward at the end of the year. Oh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely brilliant. I suppose uh, you're not going to tell me too much. I already know this, but, mate, any sneaky changes this year that you're looking forward to? Like, have you done much to the gym co? You know, just add a little bit of maybe extra, you know, cylinder head or something along those lines, just looking forward? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, probably, yeah, cats out of the bag, but we're going up to pro, which, you know, it's not going to be not going to be uh, twin turbo or anything, but we're going to go for, we've got a four and a half litre V6. Um, so pretty much... Wow. The same motor that we had, but we just got as much as possible out of it, and um, haven't even haven't even had it running yet. So hopefully we're there uh, at Rainbow with um, you know a bit more power, and you know I've seen I've seen what you know these other guys have done with an extra leader. So and I feel like uh, an extra leader on for me will probably mean a lot more. So I think I'll be able to use it all. No, mate, you make an excellent point. Now, Clayton, you're looking, uh, this is Clayton Chapman out of Queensland, looking at running the full series this year, mate. Like, how's prep going for you guys? It's been a bit uh, tumultuous down in uh, southern Queensland at the moment. We've been having a few cyclones and storms. No effects. You're ready. You're prepped. You've got a couple of cars going. I mean, there's probably six cars now in the Chapmans. 
Yeah, we've got a couple in the shed. Uh, but no, we're just the, the two buggies, myself and the Razorback, and my young brother Stu in his chair, little single seater. Um, we'll bring the, yeah, bring them along to support the turbo crowd, you know, small capacity turbo though, no three and a halves, you don't need it. So, but uh, yeah, the whole championship's what we're aiming for um, and um, possibly hopefully slide the old Don River Dash in there as well. So um, yeah, just looking forward to it. Um, yeah, we just love getting away interstate racing again. Uh, missed out for a few years and um, yeah, just can't wait to get back into it. It's just a great group of people to go racing with competing and um, yeah, the racing's fierce and yeah, just love it. Love the battles and the fights and the challenge. So, um, yeah, can't wait. Oh, it's brilliant, mate. Now, tell me, over the years, you've given us some absolutely epic battles. And I tell you what is exciting is that, uh, I don't know if you like this terminology, but you're a bit of a shootout gun. I won't lie to you. I've seen you go, you know, push very hard and be right up the front. Is that a format that you enjoy, like that top 10 shootout, you know, that, that you know, balls to the wall, really getting after it in, in a shootout type situation? It's something that you seem to be good at. Yeah, there has been a few weekends I wish the race finished after prologue. Um, but nevertheless, I understand it's real race and we can't do that. So, no, we've um, oh, we've just always been of the attitude right from the Class 7 days. Um, basically, while the tracks are smooth, just get after it. That's when you can make the best time and then you can slow down and preserve the car after that. So, um, that's kind of how we've always gone from the day when we used to hold a little three-litre flat to the, to the day we got 700 horsepower. So, um, yeah, we just... Adam and I work so well in the car that we can, you know, kind of put them together quite well. And it comes from, I suppose, our Queensland race, which we've done so much of just our short course style events where it's always just flat out. And, um, yeah, we kind of like it. The long course stuff, we had to, had to get our head around a little bit because we, uh, you know, from the Triton days, never got to do much of the national events. But, um, yeah, we're kind of enjoying it. So looking forward to it. Now, boys, did anyone notice the way that 700 slipped uh, off the tongue? Uh, mate, I didn't know you were a liar. Come on, Clayton. Far out, mate. <laughs> anyway, the moral of the story is that, uh, yes, that 2J is very quick and it's a very impressive piece of gig. We, we, we jest, mate. We jest. Hey, Tony, you're in the same boat, mate. Are you looking forward to Rainbow? You're, you're prepped. You're ready to go. Everything's going the way that you want it? Yeah, mate. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, the track's looking really, 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 really good. Uh, the conditions are good. Um, the pits are going to be excellent. Uh, the amenities are going to be really good. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're having to work and be there next weekend just to tidy up a few things and uh, get some logs and get some GPS files for uh, for the map and rally safe and so forth. But, uh, yeah, no, apart from that, it's it's all looking good, mate. That's excellent, Tony. Now, can you let any little secrets out maybe for our viewers and, and you know, let the world know? what's Is there anything this rainbow is going to have that uh, hasn't been in previous rainbows or anything that we should expect, anything that's stepping up or anything along those lines? Because, I mean, rainbow is such a fantastic event. Everyone that goes there loves it. Everyone that loves the community and goes, you know, enjoys the race. It's been such a great experience down there. But, you know, is there something, are you guys pushing for something in particular this year that's going to make 2024 as exciting as it can be? Um, yeah, we've made just a couple of little changes to the track, which should put, um, yeah, which should make it a bit more interesting without letting too much out. But, um, yeah, look, we've, we've made a couple of little changes. The, the prologue track is, has been graded, so it's a lot smoother. Uh, it's a lot faster. When we ran the 240 there back in August, it was, um, tires were actually screeching on it. So it's, um, it's really toughened up and it's, um, yeah, it's really good now. So, yeah, no, um. It's looking good. Oh, that's awesome, mate. No question about that. And obviously, you know, uh, with ARB Championship always running the live feed, that's something that is so enjoyable and it's going to be, you know, fantastic to have that availability where, you know, people from all around the world can really be enjoying the Australian racing that's going on because, you know, I think that's something that, you know, it's been around for a little while, but it's really been, you know, tweaked and perfected and it's just getting better and better. It's something that really brings it to the masses, isn't it? Yeah, so, nah. um Sorry, mate. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, so, yeah, boys, you know, running it back. So how are we going with Bowie at the moment? Are we back on live? Hey, Bowie. Uh, sorry, mate. We had a little internet connection there uh, issue, which we understand. Some of you guys are a little bit more remote. We're a bit remote too. We're, the reason, if anyone's asking, not that we're making excuses. I know you guys like it, but we were tight on time because we were in the same boat, Bowie. Starlink was giving us all sorts of drama. So old Elon, but he's come through with the goods for us and we're, we're, we're working here tonight, which is great. Yeah, no, it's, it is cutting in and out. I'm not getting every word, but we'll see how it goes. 
Nah, it's good, mate. But are you looking forward to a great race season this time? It's 2024 oh, is going yeah, to be 100%. a big one. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll um, we'll sign up to do the rounds if we can, work permitting, and um, and if the car's going. But you know, we're keen to have a run again, mate. I guess for all of our fans out there, running that ten car that you've got. Tell us what the secret is to running a 10 car up inside the top 10 at events like Gundawindi and bits and pieces like that. Like, do I don't know, like, can we talk real horsepower with yourself? Like, what's the number that you're talking about realistically? Don't lie like Clayton Chapman does. A bit over 200. Oh, come on. Come on. Surely you got a little Here bit more than that. No, it's not much more over 200. Yeah. That makes sense, though. It's a 2.5 litre or 2.4 litre. Uh, 2.4, yeah. Yeah, and are you running the uh, – it's a Honda, isn't it? Yeah, Honda K24, yeah. Yeah, very impressive bit of gear. I mean, the way that it runs and, and it's, it's you know, been – I know you probably don't think this, but for the way that it is consistently screaming, it's quite a reliable platform, isn't it? We really love the 10 class. It's such a great – uh, class, you know, where you can go really, really fast. I wouldn't say it's a budget class. I mean, there's no no such thing as an off-road racing budget, is there? Just put it in a pile and burn it. Is that, that the way off-road racing works? Oh, you pretty much you just don't add it up or you wouldn't do it, I reckon. But it is a fantastic class, the 10 class, and it's gaining some real popularity. You know, I think particularly with guys like yourself, you know, really uh, at the forefront of it and pushing along very nicely. I mean, it, it makes it a very... Um, an interesting and, and very applicable class, doesn't it? Well, 100%, and it's just about being consistent too and being there at the end. Yeah, that's sort of where you, you know, you achieve a fair few things. Just get the chequered flag and, um, yeah, you just gather the points and see how you go at the end. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, awesome work, boys. Now, talking about cars, we'll go to the a bit of the other spectrum. Danny Brown's got a new uh, a vehicle, and I tell you what uh, – I don't know if you like this wording, but it's really on the cutting edge of buggy technology right at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, look, it's something – it's been four years – it was almost four years to the day from when I ordered it when it landed. Um, obviously, there was a few hold-ups with COVID, uh, but we built a four-wheel drive class one buggy or pro-class buggy, ultimate buggy, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, yeah, no, it's, it's – we went and raced it um, in October over in Mexico. We went to the Nora 500, which is – it's like a 250 miles each day from Ensenada to San Felipe, then San Felipe back to Ensenada. So you do a lot of the, you know, a lot of the tracks you'll see on um, any of the Baja races. We did a lot of that um, into the big San Felipe whoops and across Lake Diablo and um, up in the hills. So we sort of got to do a bit of everything in it. Um, it's frighteningly fast in the rough, in the in the tight stuff. Um, it's really fast out of corners, um, but it's sort of, yeah, it's, it's slower in other places um, than my turbo car, such as it's, it's probably quicker up to about that 100, 100 120 k an hour, and then the, the turbo car goes. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it's quicker um, and where it's not. Um, we've got a fair bit of work to do on the programming of it because we can adjust the amount of drive to the front end, um, and then we can pull the, the all drive out completely and run into all drive, which you want to do um, sort of when you get up to some higher speeds. So. We've got a lot of work to do on programming on that. Um, Dad's going to run that one at Rainbow. I'm going to run the turbo car. Um, and we're building a, a seven-litre uh, VK56 engine for his um, his his other car. So that's um, that's almost done. The cranks are almost here. So didn't quite get it ready in time for, for Rainbow, but he'll have that one at, um, at, uh, at Griffith at Hilston. Yeah, awesome, mate. So can we have a little talk about like t that technology come along that you talk about, which is amazing. Alumicraft, it's the is it the second car or it's one that, like they were built side by side? There's one racing in America at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, Cody Reed um, at RPI has one. Um, so we originally started in about 2018. I went to Albans and told them what I wanted to do. Um, and we were originally going to build a four-wheel drive trophy truck. Um, and then I changed my mind sort of in the initial build process um, just with a – at the time with our six litre limit, it just wasn't going to be enough power to push the thing. Um, so then I was going to build a turbo powered four wheel drive buggy. And then after getting my car and seeing how much work was in the back end of it, we, we went back to V8 um, in that thing. So it's, it's an LS based engine. It's, it's got all the fruit in it. Um, it's a, so it's an LS seven based engine built by Jeff Ginter who did, did um, Harley, Harley Lettner's engine in his alpha. Um, so yeah, it was it was a lot of work with Albans in the initial stages, getting the design right, and could we actually do it? Then we had to build a diff um, for the front end, 
so that was all done and we had everything there ready to go um and then we had the first one it was getting built and then um yeah cody reed had a workshop fire and they lost all their cars um and they were a long time alumacraft customer so john cooley rang us and said um would you mind giving up the first one to them um so we said no we weren't really fussed um you don't really want the first of anything so we thought yeah great this is a it's a good guinea pig um so they took over that order um and they've they've put a lot of miles on the thing you know i mean if they complete the Baja 1000, that's a whole year's worth of racing for us, essentially. So um, the diffs are living, the, the gearbox is living, CVs are living in the front end. They're a bit restricted on their travel. We get about 20 inches in the front. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's heavy in the front. You notice it. Um, but, you know, so a trophy truck. So it can work to your advantage, especially in the rough. They, they stay really, really planted. Um, theirs is a little bit different um, in terms of they run a big block. Um, they run 40-inch wheels, uh, tyres. Uh, and they've got trophy truck hubs on it as well. So we've we've pulled a lot of weight out of there um, by running the traditional Volkswagen five star. We're only running 37s. Um, but we had to go, you know, we had to get wheels made um, because it wasn't an offset right. So, you know, it was just all these things we sort of found along the way. So we ended up having to go on a, uh, a Pro-Am and getting wheels forged um, and making, you know, a different offset for the front. and. So it was, a, it was a project, but um, it's something we've always wanted to do. Obviously, being from the four-wheel drive industry, we um, we just know the benefits of four-wheel drive and running, you know, safari cars in the past. Um, you can really tell the difference. And it was when we went and raced in Baja, it was, um, you know, if I could have taken that car instantly to the pines, I would have known, been able to tell exactly where it was faster and where it was slower. But over in America, um, you know, we're sort of unfamiliar, ter- unfamiliar territory. It was a brand-new car that we didn't want to wreck, so... We sort of took it a little bit easy and um, I think after day one, we were third overall and we weren't really pushing the car at all. So it's, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what it's like here for sure. That's brilliant, mate. Hey, now listen, I'm fascinated because you said a few things there. So uh, you're talking about Albans being involved directly. So is it, it's an Albans front end as well as an Albans gearbox or like do they do the four wheel drives for that? Yeah, so they do a clutching system. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same layout as your normal buggy. Um, but off the front of the nose cone on the transmission, um, it's probably like an eight-inch sort of cylinder-looking thing. Um, and what that is is about 10 motorbike wet clutches with air pressure up the back. So the air pressure um, will determine how much lock you're going to the front end. And then in the front end, it's an Albans diff. Um, so it's a billet alloy diff with 934 shocks. Um, and we just run a tail shaft directly up the front. Um, and they've uh, Robbie Gordon's been running one of his in the Unicorn. Um, RJ Anderson's got the... I think he's got one in his Pro 4. Um, and then they've been using that clutching system on a lot of the Pro 4s as well. So, I mean, they're, they're proven to be able to run 900,000 horsepower um, and and not burn up. So, you know, we can, we're can we pretty confident in what we can do, get a, get out of them here for a year or so before having to service them. Well, there you go, mate. You answered my very next question because then I was going to lead is, is it a develop like is it a development part or is it a production part? And so at the moment, if you went to Albans and you wanted to build something, this is something that everyone could buy at the moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, take your checkbook and um, you can get one. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Again, that's off-road racing. It's brilliant. Hey, Clayton, let's have a chat to you for a second, mate. You come off a storming um, Don River Dash, which is one of the Aura events that's brilliant around the place. It is a bit of a bit of a standalone event up there in North Queensland. But, you know, are you looking to bring some of that momentum and that speed into the ARB Championship this year? Surely, you know, it's it's a uh, confidence-inspiring thing to have such a good crack towards the end of last year. Yeah, it's, um, start with Gun Windy, I suppose. We've got our first ever national win. Um, pretty big moment for us. And then we carried that through to the Don and had a throttle cable issue on Saturday, which pulled us back a bit. Um, but yeah, obviously just, um, just kept, um, getting faster and faster each day in the river. And we were just, yeah, just blown away with what you can do when you go fast. So um, yeah, Adam and I just, yeah, maybe overly confident, but we'll see how that goes for us. No, it's, um, yeah, it's good, good to, to, um, yeah, learn that high speed sort of rough terrain driving because, um, you know, in our other cars, we never got there too much. So, um, yeah, we just can't wait. Can't wait to get down to the rainbow and try and do some laps and uh, keep the crankshaft in for more than 400 metres this year. So, oh, oh. Uh, that happens every now and then. It happens to the best of us, eh, Danny? So, you know, these sort of things are part of racing. But, yeah, at, at Don River, I tell you what, you guys were absolutely flying from where we were in our seat 
uh, when you came past in the little 2J, it was uh, because you'd had those throttle issues, you were out of place. So you're actually starting in a bit of a different location from where we thought you would. And then all of a sudden, holy moly, charging through the field. So it was very cool to see. Uh, it's a bit of an unusual event up there. It's actually a reverse grid, which makes it even more interesting for spectators. It's uh, it's unique. Let's say that. Hey, Josh. And it's a very good thing. It's a cool race. So I know you, you'll be back again this year, Clayton, to have a run at Don. I actually heard Danny Brown was looking at coming up too. I don't know whether that's a real rumor or not, but I'm starting. Maybe Brett Martin as well. Approach it all come up, I reckon. Rupert, cracker event. <laughs> yeah, it is a brilliant event. There's no question about that. And then bring, um, bring your dirt bike too and have a lap as well. It's lots of fun. Uh, I'd like to see Danny Brown do that. Yeah, yeah. Pony Express. He's, he's just right up. <laughs> <laughs> been a while since you've been on a dirt bike, Danny, or what? Yeah. Oh, no, actually, I rode the other day. Not a big one, Clean. a little 110, but, you know. Beautiful. Well, you're prepped ready to go. 110 at the Don. That'd be pretty interesting, I reckon. What a class. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, it's, it's a very interesting race and it's got plenty going on up there. And I tell you what, again, the other side of it, I don't know if we're just preaching this, but you know, the fact that you get to stay in Bowen on the water, both Josh and I, our units, it was not difficult, was it, Josh? It was very nice. It was a good race weekend. But let's get back to Rainbow. So, you know, like moving forward with it, you know, it's only a little bit away now, guys. You know, how does prep look for everyone? Let's go around the list there. Bowie, how is your prep going this year? And are you ready for Rainbow? Yeah, 100%, mate. We're ready to go. Put the panels on the car and in the truck and, um, yeah, no, car's good to go. A couple of little jobs, a couple of shock rubbers, but nothing. Pretty much ready to go. Well, I tell you what, that's pretty unusual for an off-road racer uh, right before a national uh, start of a championship series, but that's that's impressive. There's no question about that. Brent, how are you going? Are you – oh, well, you've, you actually have sort of led to this, but is there anything other than the motor, other than the motor that is a big issue for you guys at the moment? You're moving forward nicely. Uh, yeah, well, definitely not in Bowie's uh, position. We haven't even had the motor going yet. So, um, Dino, um, hopefully in the next few weeks. And, um, yeah, so Ronnie Melton's built this engine for us, and I'm sure it'll all run smoothly. But, you know, it's sort of first time anyone's ever done it, sort of, I think, through off-roading. I don't, I don't – possibly someone has, but um, first time we've done it. So it'll be interesting to see what it makes and, you know, and what it – what it handles like and everything but um yeah, it's all full steam ahead in our, in our garage and um unfortunately dad's not going to be ready uh with his new seven liter but dale has um been flat out with his gym co he only got he only got about four or five k's at rainbow last year and that's all he's driven it so full rebuild on that thing um going away from the vq 35 and put a ford motor in it so he, um he'll be one to look out for it uh, at rainbow i'm sure yeah so when you say ford it's something along the eco boost line are we still talking turbo v6 or gone to ford v8 style uh no it's still the eco boost uh twin turbo yeah so it'll be it'll be a rocket ship brilliant and do you mind if we ask like the four and a half that you're building for a for your uh pro car is it still vq based like are you going or you've gone down a different base motor uh, same, no, same motor we had last year. It was literally just so we could bolt it in um, with the setup that we already had, and yeah, sort of minimise having to having to change mounts and all that sort of stuff. So it was just an easy way for us to, and hopefully, you know, ten, fifteen percent extra <laughs> would be good. Um, you know, catch up because we were, we were 180, 180 top speed. So before, hopefully get up somewhere close to 200 and, um, you know, we'll be able to keep up with Danny and he, and, uh, you know, all the other boys that, that are, you know, they're doing, they're pushing 240. So I think if, uh, yeah, a little bit more for us, we'll be, we'll be happy. We'll catch them, in, catch them in the corners. Absolutely, mate. I do like that. And I, I always know that you are, have a can do attitude. I, I like that about the boys there. So, um, listen, it, just to keep down that path, just because I'm fascinated, I always love all of this tech side of stuff when guys do changes. So, are you still running the, all the same top end stuff? Has it re facilitated the need for, you know, heads? Obviously, it's already a six stack style inlet manifold that you're running on that car. I'm assuming it's not a plastic style intake on the, what you had before. Yeah, no, it's a full new engine. Um, you know, Ron Melton's and, and Brett have, uh, done a massive job on it so and then um dean williams is doing all new intake for it and um 
so it's it's, it's still been a lot of work um but not as much as putting you know two turbos on there and then you know they have to pay for the fuel as well so no, awesome, mate. I'll tell you what, I'm excited to see it. I, I think it's going to be a dead set screamer and I can't wait to hear it at the uh, the first round, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, that that's absolutely classic. No question about that. It's going to be great to see the rattle and the races, uh, you know, come along over the course of the year. Now, Danny, I guess I'll, I'll mention to you as well, are you looking at doing it? We, we were actually talking, we were going to have Mick Mars on, on and he's gone racing. Big fella's gone racing in the States. Have you got a little bit of racing in the States still going on over there? Or, you know, most of your cars are back on the uh, the land down under now, aren't they? Yeah, all the cars are back here now. Um, we were going to leave the all drive over there, but after going and running it, I really wanted to bring back here. Um, I mean, especially if it's, you know, you're going to get a wet race or something like that. Um so not sure what we're going to do yet. Um, I do like racing over there. Um, so, yeah, ideally I'd love to buy, a, you know, maybe a 6100 truck um, or an old two-wheel drive trophy truck or something over there just to go and have some fun. I mean, we're not, not definitely not going over there to win. We're just going over there to, um, you know, have some fun. And we've got a bunch of friends over there now. So it's, uh, it's a definitely a good place to go. And, um, you know, it's, and the, the racing season uh, allows us to do it as well. It's sort of we can pick and choose and, and go earlier in the year as well um and there's a bit of a break between round one and two in the ab championship uh, first one being in march and the second being in july so you know you do have a bit of time there to go and do some other things if you want to yeah awesome mate absolutely brilliant hey now listen another question i was just thinking that absolutely interests me tony we might throw to you to start off with is tony have you got any standout competitors obviously other than the boys that are on the uh, show right now who are all standout competitors but you know, like if you've got some sneaky tips for us and we'll go around and see who's, uh, you know, so the boys can have a think about it in their respective classes, who are they looking forward to competing with the most? That'll be an interesting conversation. So, Tony, we'll start with you, mate. Like, you know, from your position, who are you looking at and who are you thinking are, the, are going to be the most interesting, uh, whether it be newbies or outsiders or, you know, whether it's going to be some some old faithfuls up the front? What are you thinking? Ah, oh, well, I'm, I'm thinking, well... Uh, Bo Robinson, I guess uh, he's entered. Um, he's he's no new with a rainbow, but uh, I guess he's he's a bit of a newie to, to the ARB series. So uh, we welcome Bo Robinson, um, and with his yeah with his big truck. So I, I think he's going to do quite well out the back of the out of the dunes there, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is a safe one right there. Bo Robinson is always a threat at every race that he goes to, and as you said, that new truck of his, the Mason. Uh, wow, what a piece of machinery. I tell you what, when you see it in that rough stuff, he just does not lift the throttle at all, does he? So, yeah, that's a that's a great one. Uh, Bowie, what about yourself, mate, in your class and, you know, as as well as overall, because you are running for overalls realistically, what are you feeling, uh, you know, where, where do you see the threats coming from? What's something that you're excited to see this year in the ARB series? Oh, I'll be just a few more Class 10 cars. They're even like I say, I haven't raced against Dean McGinley for ages, Carl Power. Yeah, just some, yeah, some of the other guys there that, you know, they're in our club. And yeah, I haven't really seen a list to see how many 10 cars were entered yet, but um, there's quite a fair few around. So it'd be good to see a lot more at races. Oh, absolutely, mate. And some really high level 10 cars, which is so cool. Because again, you know, with the way that they transition straight out of the United States at the moment, I mean, you know. <laughs> It's pretty, uh, I, again, I hate using this word, but it's a cost-effective way to go racing very fast. They are quick bits of gear, and they're very enjoyable, and you can buy a competitive car, can't you? There's actually quite a few for sale on, you know, the likes of Race De Desert and on Facebook Marketplace over there. I tell you what, I send a few to Brenton Thompson and Luke every now and then trying to G them into getting a 10 car, so there's always something going on there. Hey, Clayton, we'll throw to you, mate. Like, who do you see? I know that, again, you're up the pointy end, so there's plenty of threats just on this page alone. However, outside of that, you know, what are you looking at? Who are you thinking? What, you know, what's some of the things that you're most excited to see in the ARB Championship this year? Uh, well, there's always my little brother, Stuart. Family rivalries never, never cease. So, because um, they continue on past the race weekend. So, um, it's always good fun comparing our two cars and um, our different, you know, the way we tackle things and do stuff. That's always cool. But, um, yeah, I'm just keen to get to Rainbow and I didn't get doing any laps last year, so I don't really know what the track's like, but the trucks seem to dominate there with um, Greg's speed there last year's from all. So I suppose, yeah, Bo's going to be crazy and just, um, yeah, just going to, yeah, just whoever's running quick, just try and keep up, I suppose, and see how we go. So, yeah, it's just going to be good fun. 
Yeah, awesome, Clayton. No question. Listen, I'll I'll leave Brent for last. I better ask Dan, uh, mate. What's your biggest challenge? Because obviously Brent's the biggest challenge of all out here. So, but Dan, who do you see? You know, like what are you interested in seeing? What's the goals? Where is this ARB Championship going this year? In your opinion? Um, so at Rainbow, you know, it's going to be it's going to be good to see um, Dale Martin back in a um, in a in a class in a in a pro class car. Um, I mean, he's the work that Dean's done on that thing. It's it's a it's a killer build. Um, you know, and, and he's always quick in everything he gets in. So Dale's going to be great to, to have around this year. Um, Troy Duff um, he's got a new car, new Lumacraft, lot same as mine. Um, so I know what they're capable of in the in the rough. So you know, he's he's going to be no slouch as well. Um, obviously Clayton's fast, Brent's fast. Um, you know, Mark Burrows, um, who else we have? Matt Hansen shows up, um, every now and then. Mick Marson, um, yeah, Gartner, there's, this, you know, that you never go to a race thinking it'd be easy and, and, it, you know, there's, there's so many cars and so many things happen that it makes, um, it makes every, every race pretty unique and, and weather plays a big part too. So, you know, it's, it's not just who's got the fastest, who's got the biggest car with the most horsepower. It's, um, who's smart and gets to the end and, you know, it's even Matthew Burrows. You know, he's he's quick as and um, so yeah, it's it's hard to pick pick any like sort of one one rival. It's there's a lot there, and it's uh, pretty dependent on the track and the weather. Mate, you make a fantastic point. And as you started listing off those names, you're absolutely right. What a bunch of killers there! And I, like I'd forgot, I saw Troy Duff, you know, doing that testing. It was finished in Australia that car and beautifully finished too. I tell you what, some of the Australian guys that are building now are really, you know, again, I know it's an Alumicraft frame, but you know, some of the work on that vehicle is just absolutely brilliant, isn't it? It's great every time that Australians, you know, you're talking about Ron Milton and you know some of these guys. I know Dan, you you guys build a lot of the engines in house, you know, with a crew there, and you know, to have that sort of stuff go on and and you know the Australian stuff just pushing. Well, Clayton, again, you guys do everything in house, don't you? So you know, it, it's brilliant to see that sort of stuff going on further and further. And I tell you what, it's something that gets me excited every time when the Australian cars and the Australian built items run right at the front. Yeah, so then, well, I suppose. Oh. Oh. Now you go, Dan. Oh, I was just going to say, and I was just going to say, and yeah, I, I, I totally forgot about the Habies, um, Aaron and, and Carl. Um, you know, Carl's got that that Nissan. I don't know, he's changed engine now. I think he's Toyota um, twin turbo V eight. And that thing screams and yeah, no, everywhere they go, it's um, you know, they're consistent. And they always finish. So um, I always said they're a pain in the ass because they're always there. It's like like Brent, you know, you can't, you can never count them out, and they're always going to be there, always pushing you. So um, yeah, the Habies uh, and they're you know Australian built cars. They built them there in their shed, and um, yeah, they they rip. Well, even talking about that, Dan, like, you know, Airshift Hollinger out of Australia, you know, these guys are trying new things, aren't they? They're looking for different alternate options that, you know, they're looking for every little, and like you said, the Australian built cars very, very fast. So, and Brent, obviously final question for you, well, as in for the final question of this sort of stuff, like what are you looking forward to this year with the ARB Championship? Again, I hate to say it, mate, you've got a target on your back. Anyone with a one does, but, uh, you know, like who do you see the threats coming from and where and what positions, you know, what what classes are you looking forward to seeing that sort of stuff? Uh, I'm always, I'm always going to have uh, one eye on on Pro Light because you know that's my roots now. Like I was I was in Pro Light and, and my brother was in Pro Light last ten years. Like we've done, um, you know, we've won a lot of races in Pro Light between the two of us. Um, but uh, yeah, I think you know some, some people forget how good Dale is. Um, now with the twin turbo, it'd be it'd be really quick. Um, Obviously, Danny, um, yeah, Habies. There's, there's a few. There's a few guys with those Habie, uh frames that are quick. Um, Aaron James. There's 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 a heap of guys that can that can come on the weekend and um, you know if they turn up. But uh, Greg proved that it's a you know I think we're we're 25 seconds or something off him on the on the Saturday, but he he won by 10 minutes last year. He's gone. Like we couldn't couldn't push through those holes on the Sunday. So it's definitely a truck track, and I think there was there was a couple of trucks like fourth or fifth or something that were, you know, probably guys that uh, uh, that had a really good run that you know in a truck uh, for them. So I think uh, anyone with a good truck bow will be bloody hard to beat, though. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I mean, those guys are on a stonking year as well. You know, Trav winning the uh, the other Australian Championship. You know, obviously they're coming off a great position there. Bow racing at Rainbow, very exciting. So again, it's great to see everyone, you know, all these guys that are starting to really uh, push along. You know, the, the the vehicles are getting that sophisticated. I know we go through every area, but 
sorry, era, and you know, say that. But like at the moment, the vehicle technology and how quick they are is is truly stonking, isn't it? They're just such great bits of equipment, and the things that you can hit in them are absolutely ridiculous, you know. So going into there, boys, you know, again, if we uh, want to start talking about maybe just starting to talk about the events. So um, I don't know, Danny, do you want to take this away for this question? Like, you know, we talked earlier about the events coming up, but, you know, working through that, you're going to have live feed at all of your rounds this year. What are some of the things that, you know, again, ARB are pushing this year with this new championship? Well, it's not a new championship now. Gee, it's it's been around a good couple of years, hasn't it, Dan? Yeah, I think we're all... Uh... Ninth, tenth year, I think we're in now. Um, so yeah, we're still um, still got our four um, four events a year, um, which I think is a, a sort of good number for the people um, to get to um, without having to take too much time off work. And and geographically, it works pretty well as well. Um, the live feed, yeah, it's going to be at, at, at every event. Um, that's the plan. I mean, it is it is up to the clubs. It's a lot of money um, out of the club's pocket that they've got to come up with. Um, and you got to remember these these clubs; they're not making making not making money out of these events a lot of the time they might even run at a loss so um you know i did see one thing pop up after the rainbow entries and there was a few people banging on about the uh the entry cost because it was it was up there this year and, and vora did a great job of scaling it um depending on the entries but um you know that's it, for different all our events are in different states so you know victoria does have higher insurances and and more requirements so and these things have happened over the last couple of years especially since covid um prices have gone up with with just about everything um so these clubs aren't they're not making money they're um and they're working their, their butts off to make the events happen but you know the other the other three events have uh, sort of managed to like they're, they're going to manage to keep their um their entry fees similar to to what they've been in the past because nothing sort of changed too much um in that respect in those states south australia new south wales and queensland so they should should stay around the same um but on that, yeah, the, the live feed's um, something we're really pushing with. We're quite proud of it, um, how it works. Um, Huddy's, uh, so Shane Hutt, he's managing the one for uh, Rainbow. Um, and, you know, he, he's calling me every other week and he's coming up with little ideas and um, there's going to be live feeds from inside the cars. Um, ideally, you know, it's it's a work in progress. Um, the things, and Huddy's, Huddy's investing his own money because he, he wants to see the sport grow. So, He's putting in money to make this happen. Um, and it, yeah, as I said, it's, yeah, so live feeds out of cars, drones, a lot of camera work. And Rainbow is one of those tracks too that you can see a lot of the track from the um, from the um, Spectator Hill, especially Prologue. Um, and there's some ripper spots out there for the camera crews to get to that can see a fair bit as well. Um, but, you know, Bowie can probably hit on um, on Hillston and the event there. Um, he works he works close with the club. So... He's probably uh, the best to talk to about um, about rank, round two. Well, let's do that. But again, I'm sorry if I missed it. We we're just you know organised. But you're talking 22nd to 24th of March for in Rainbow Victoria. So guys, if you're interested in you you know in that area, that's the option there. 22nd and 24th. Then let's move to Hillston, New South Wales. So that's the 5th to the 7th of July. Bowie, can you give us a bit of a rundown on what's going on in Hillston? And again, the 5th to the 7th of July. A little bit of a break there, isn't there, boys? So you can really get here and you know do some good prep, get ready, and then you know have that event at Hillston. Yeah, well, I uh, I don't think too much will change from last year. Hopefully, it'll be a little drier. We're going to uh, pray for a few less um, raindrops. But, um, yeah, I missed a meeting the other night. I was working. But, um, yeah, the guys, are yep, they're organising stuff, and she's full steam ahead. So um, I don't think a great lot of stuff will really change. And, um, yeah, just hopefully it's a bit drier because, yeah, it, um, yeah track rain statement there last year was, um, yeah, it was a big drama. There was a pretty big mess to clean up, so... Um, yeah, hopefully it won't be that bad this year. Yeah, absolutely. Totally understand. Now, moving on from there, it's going to be Gundawindi in Queensland. Clayton, we might talk to you seeing as you're last year's uh, Gundawindi champion. It is the 9th to the 11th of August, so nice weather out there in Gundawindi in August. So, you know, what are some of the things? Because I know, um, I'm not sure if this is common knowledge if you haven't been to Gundawindi, but the track has changed a little bit in recent years. They had that move away from the Malapanya, but the spectator area, I tell you what, the new one, it is banging, isn't it? Yeah, no, they've, the club's done such a great job on the new pit area there. The uh, the pits are so flat and well marked out and that massive spectator mound with the um, couple of ins and outs where you see the cars come through, it's fantastic. So um, in there for last year, they stepped up to the 500 kilometre race, not that we got to compete at all with the, the fires that called it off short. But um, this year, hopefully we can um, 
yeah, get our top 10 run in on Saturday and then get all the 500 Ks done for this year and, and um, yeah, keep hitting those melon holes lap, lap after lap. Yeah, I, I heard that was Talbot Cox shooting flames starting those fires out there. That's the that I'm starting anyway, so we'll blame him anyway. But then after that, we're going to Millicent in South Australia. And, and boys, tell us which which Danny or, or Brent, which one would like to talk a bit about Millicent, Millicent? Sorry, I apologize. And again, that is the 20 to 22nd of September and a great race in there at Millicent. Uh, yeah, I'll have a crack. <laughs> um, the boys down at Millicent do, do an awesome job yeah, every year. I think they've got it down to it down to a fine art now they've they've done it that many times and now they're just you know really refining it and making it better for families you know they've got a trucks there with sand for the kids to play in and all like you know so much set up for families it's a it's a really good one to take you take the family to and and as danny was saying before we had some beautiful yeah. weather there the last couple of couple of years so it's um you know really puts it on for us but they've got a good format with the racing it's all close racing reverse grid um, the Saturdays are, you know, just really good for the crowd. They, you know, going sick last year, um, battling with Andy. Andy Brown was was the highlight of highlight of the event for me, but um, or of the year for me really. But uh, you know, you don't get racing like that anywhere else in the country. So we're lucky to have that event uh, on on the calendar. Oh, absolutely, yeah, might, mate. Oh, go I for it, Dan. In there too. I was I was just going to say every year after. Um, after Millicent, I get phone calls and messages off a bunch of mates that, that race all over the country, and they always say, oh, geez, and it's mainly because of the live feed, but they always say, geez, I wish I came down. And if you've never done Millicent, you have to get down there and do it. It's, it's you know, Gundawindi is probably my favourite track, but um, as an event, it's it's hard to beat Millicent. It's, it's a ripper spot, good town. Everyone gets behind it. Um, you know, there's plenty of pubs and restaurants and accommodation around Mount Gambia, Millicent, Beachport. Um, and you're racing in a, in a working pine forest, which is something you don't normally get to do. And, you know, you're hitting, um, we, we actually cut onto a bitumen road and go down bitumen roads. Um, the, there's a straight on the way out that I think is three and a half K, four K long. Um, and if you want to see how fast your car will go, that's, that's where you'll do it. I mean, we passed, we passed Tyler Owen under brakes at 235 last year, uh, or not the year before. So, you know, if you, if you want to see how fast your car can go, you've got to go to Nelson. Yeah, that's awesome. And I was going to say, one of the great things about Millicent, mate, is, you know, some of that footage that you get where you're coming out of those dry, hot, dusty dirt roads into wet pine forest at pace, like some of the talent, the way that the light changes and some of the things going on there, I tell you what, it is definitely a, uh, a someone, you know, you got to have your ducks lined up there, don't you? You have to, you, you're on it. So, boys, again, thank you so much. I think we're going to start wrapping it up here. Oh, no, go, Dan. Sorry, no, I was just agreeing with you. I was like, yep, yeah, um, yeah, if any, anyone listening that, you know, has been thinking about doing it, lock that one in your calendar, you got to come. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much great stuff on YouTube and, and you know, you, uh, all of you guys have great got great videos and, and, you know, the socials and all those sort of things. And again, we should encourage you, if you haven't, go and follow all of these boys on their social medias and all the other stuff. There's plenty going on there. You know, it's uh, it's worth a follow. It, there's plenty of entertaining. Uh, actually, Sandy Bowman, Dan wants to know when the next time the backflip's happening. Is it at Gundy this year? If I win four events in a row, I'll do it at, Gun- at Millicent. <laughs> There you go, Sandy. You've got your answer, my man. And is Sandy back on the uh, on the stream this year, Dan, as your roving reporter? That's an that's a question I got to ask. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's um, again, it's up to the clubs um, what they do. But he's going to be at um, he's going to be at, uh, at at Rainbow, um, running around there with the uh, hopefully he puts a hat on this time. Otherwise, he's going to end up looking like my shirt. Um, but yeah, no, he's uh, he'll be there running around and heckling everyone as always. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, again, listen, lads, I know it is a little bit shorter than a normal, but we're going to wrap it up just because we're all, well, you guys are on daylight. It's only 8 o'clock in Queensland, but I know it's 9 o'clock down there in Victoria. And again, we appreciate, uh, let's just use the word technical difficulties that we had on Friday or, or, you know, family relation type things that happened in uh, Josh and I's life. So we did push it back to Sunday. So we appreciate you making yourselves available and all those things. So, boys, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here on the Dirtbags podcast. Uh, again, we'll just go around and, and go if there's anything. And, again, you want to shout out anyone, any information. Uh, Bowie, have you got anything to, to end at the end of the Dirtbags podcast? Um, no, not really. And uh, oh, hopefully we just get a lot of entries yeah, to each race and uh, a lot of people turn up. So, 
yeah, we can have a lot of cars racing against each other and hopefully, um, yeah, drop the um, entry fee a little bit. 70 odd, 75, 80 cars would be nice. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's going to be a great race. This Again, it just keeps going stronger and stronger, this championship. Yeah. And, you know, the numbers are always turning up. It's brilliant. Yep. Now, Brent, about how about yourself, mate? You know, it's been a pleasure having you. We appreciate your time. on. It is, it's a little bit different format for Josh and I. You know, normally we interview one guy, but, you know, having a, having a stage full here, it's been entertaining. Yeah, no, you've, you've done well. Thanks thanks for, for all your help tonight, boys. And, um, you know, trying to trying to hype it up and, you know, get, get a – you know, people people behind the series, hopefully, and um, you know, come out and have a, have a bit of good racing this year. And uh, I think there'll be, you know, good numbers, good cars. You know, there's some of the best cars in the country uh, are racing at uh, ARB series. Um, so looking looking forward to another big year. You know, they've got four best four of the best uh, tracks in in the country, and um, you know, let's let's do battle. It'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You're absolutely on point there. You know, again, it's such a great set of races and, and, and combined, it is a true off-road racing championship. You know, it's got a little bit of everything, which is so good. You know, we talk about the rough of Gundy, the fast of Millicent, you know, it's got everything. It's got rainbow. It's got, yeah, it's just such a brilliant event. So uh, championship, sorry, like as a whole, which is great. And Clayton, how about yourself, mate? Like, you know, let's wrap this thing up. You know, what's the plan for the year and, and what are we doing? Uh, we're just keen to go racing. So we're going to go and, yeah, just enjoy ourselves and get to those good races and just, yeah, tackle the best tracks that Australia has to offer and um, under the yeah, best clubs. So we're just yeah, always so thankful for the clubs that put on the events and, and the hard work and volunteers um, because, yeah, without them, it just doesn't happen. So just a, a forward thank you to all them. Um, we get out there and put them on for us. It's, uh, yeah, and all the recovery crews that we all have to use sometimes. So thank you to those fellas. And, um, yeah, it's another one aura.com.au is where all the uh, yeah, event information is for, for restoration in Australia. So make sure you head over there and, and keep up to date. Hey, isn't he a good lad, that boy? I, thanks, mate. I was going to say that. We were actually searching before, looking for information, and we did end up on the Aora site. So there you go. And it's a fantastic information. Got great photos, great racing, and all the information, as well as the Facebook page. Again, follow along. You've got the videos and all that sort of stuff. Tony, you've got a bit more of an event organiser hat on, you know, involved with the club and that sort of thing. So from your perspective, you know, how's the next couple of weeks look? Yeah, look, the next couple of weeks are looking good. Like, entries are coming in pretty steady. Uh, got some good names in there, so um, you know the more entries we get, the uh, the cheaper obviously it's going to be for for competitors. Um, that's something new that we're trying this year. Um, so yeah, look, it's it's looking good from from our perspective. Um, you know the event's going to look good, like the venue is going to look good, the track's going to look good. Um, you know we've got everyone involved, so that's looking good from our perspective. That's brilliant, mate. And, yeah, that is brilliant that it's going so good and that everything's lining up now. Again, we are at the pointy end, aren't we? It's only a few short uh, weeks away and we're racing there. So, And, Dan, again, you know, as you've got a few hats on, you know, you're almost like you know, you're a major sponsor, you're an event organiser behind the scenes and you're a competitor as well. So, you know, mate, what's the next couple of weeks look for it like for you and, and, you know, where are you going from here? Uh, well, I only washed the champagne out of the car last week, so I got – a lot of prep work to do. Uh, well, that's just been sitting there since Millison. So uh, we've been pretty busy. Um, we've got uh, a few cars to, to prep and get ready for this year. We're gonna we're gonna try and do as sort of as much racing as possible. We'll you'll you'll see us show up at a, a fair few races we wouldn't normally. So we'll be around this year for sure. Oh, that's exciting stuff, mate. It is always exciting to see cars racing again across a wide range because I know it is, even the off-road racing community just doesn't matter where you are or what series you're racing or championship you're racing or, you know, whether you're doing local races or, you know, when you get to the event, when you're in the paddock, when you're racing, it's just such a great community of off-road races and it's something that really drew us in as racing crowd. You know, we came from a motocross background and not that there's anything wrong with the motocross boys at all. It's fine. Heaps of fun. But it is, uh, you know, it's more like we, people want to win on the track, not off the track as much. And I think that's something that is really enjoyable about the whole team spirit and the off-road racing and the ARB championship as a whole. We see it all the time in the pits, you know, around the events, you know, whether it be Saturday night and the boys are down, you know, destroying the local or whatever's going. I don't mean the words destroying. I mean, uh, you know, uh, enjoying the local uh, public you know, uh, facilities. Is that where I'm going? Yeah, yeah. Danny, why are you smiling, mate? Hey. Anyway, you get where I'm going with this. And, and boys, it's uh, just absolutely a pleasure to have you on board here this year. 
ARB Championship. It's going to be a ripper. Yeah, thanks for the support. No worries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much. This has been the first one of 2024. We say this a lot, but we are hoping to get a little bit more regular. If, uh, you know, maybe Danny will come on and Brent will come on. We'll we'll catch up with him one more. You know, all of you guys, Clayton, we haven't had you on yet, mate. We might have to line you guys up. So it's going to be a good time here. We're going to, uh, you know, look forward to the year of racing that is going to be 2024. We, you know, everything's open. We're cranking. The race cars are in the country. You know, the all the vehicles are over from America now. All the logistics side of it is opening up. I tell you what, it is going to be a cracking year in 2024. Again, boys, thanks so much for joining us. We've had an absolute uh, enjoyable Sunday afternoon with you, and we've enjoyed a, a quiet drink and, and, you know, plenty of information here, and uh, we'll see you all at the races. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.